In this video, we are going to learn how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. In a previous lesson, all of our equations were already factored for us, so all we had to do was use the principle of zero products to solve. When I look at these examples here, you'll notice that these are not factored. And so what we are going to have to do is factor it first. We are going to use these same four steps for every problem. Step one is that one side of the equation must equal zero. If one side of the equation does not equal zero, we need to make it equal zero before we can move on to step two. Step two is to factor the quadratic expression. Step three is to use the principle of zero products to set each factor equal to zero. And then step four is to solve each equation. So let's try that here with example one. On example one, it says solve by factoring. We have x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals zero. Step one, one side of the equation must equal zero. So I have my left side of the equation and the right side of the equation. Does one side of my equation equal zero? Yeah, this side right here. Step two is to factor. Our first step with factoring is to always look for GCF. What is the GCF here? There is not one. When there is not a GCF, we go straight to the area model. First term goes in the first box, last term goes in the last box. You always need to multiply your first number by your last number. One times 16 is 16. So I'm looking for factors of 16 that add to negative 8. If you're not sure, write out your factor list for 16. I have 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 4 times 4. Which one of these could give me a positive 16 and a negative 8? 4 and 4. If I do negative 4 times negative 4, I'll get positive 16. And negative 4 plus negative 4 is negative 8. Those are going to be the numbers that go in the empty spaces of my area model. From here, I'm going to find the GCF of each row and of each column. The GCF of my top row is x. The GCF of my bottom row is negative 4. The GCF of the left side is x and the GCF of the right side is negative four. So now what I've done is I've just factored the left side of this equation. This left side is now x minus four times x minus four, and that still equals zero. So from here I can use the principle of zero products to solve. I have this factor times this factor equals zero. So either x minus 4 equals 0 or x minus 4 equals 0. I can solve this. To undo subtraction, I'll do addition and get x equals 4. To undo subtraction, I'll do addition and get x equals 4. So my answer is x equals 4. Let's try the same steps on example 2. On step one, step one is one side must equal zero. Does one side of my equation equal zero here? No. So the first thing I'm going to do is make it equal zero. So I'm going to add six to both sides. Six is not a like term with x squared or 5x, so I'm just going to rewrite this in standard form. Here's 6 minus 6 is 0. Now this is in standard form and one side equals 0. So now I can move on to step 2, which is to factor. Your first step with factoring is to always look for a GCF. Here there is not one. So now I'm going to go straight to the area model. First term goes in the first box, last term goes in the last box. You always want to multiply your first number by your last number. 
1 times 6 is 6. So that means that I'm looking for factors of 6 that add to 5. Factors of 6 that add to 5 are 2 and 3. Those are going to be the numbers that go in the empty spaces of my area model. The greatest common factor of my top row is x. The greatest common factor of my bottom row is 3. The greatest common factor of the left column is x. And the greatest common factor of the right column is 2. So we've just factored this side. When we factored it, we got x plus 3 times x plus 2 and that is still going to equal zero. Step three is to use the principle of zero products. This times this equals zero. So I can set each factor equal to zero and solve each equation from there. To undo addition, I'll do subtraction and get x equals negative three. To undo addition, I'll do subtraction and get x equals negative 2. These are my solutions. On example 3, is this one in standard form? Yeah, this is in standard form and one side equals 0, so we are good to go. My first step is going to be to find my GCF. What is my GCF here? I do not have one, so my GCF is none. My next step is going to be to use the area model. First term goes in the first box, last term goes in the last box. You always need to multiply your first number by your last number. 9 times negative 4 is negative 36. So here I'm looking for factors of negative 36 that add to 0. Remember, I'm adding to 0 because I am missing that B term. Two numbers that multiply to negative 36 and add to 0 are negative 6 and positive 6. Those are going to be the numbers that go in the empty spaces of my area model. The greatest common factor of my top row is 3x. The greatest common factor of my bottom row is 2. The greatest common factor of the left column is 3x. And the greatest common factor of my right column is negative 2. So now I have 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. From here, I can use the principle of zero products to solve. This factor times this factor equals 0. So I can set this factor equal to 0 and solve, and I can set this factor equal to 0 and solve. To undo addition, I'll do subtraction and get 3x is equal to negative 2. To undo multiplication, I'll do division and get x equals negative 2 thirds. On my other equation, to undo subtraction, I'll do addition and I'll get 3x is equal to 2. To undo multiplication, I'll do division and get x is equal to positive 2 thirds. So my answers are negative two-thirds and positive two-thirds. Go ahead and pause the video and try the try this problem. The first thing I need to do on this problem is make it equal zero. So I'm going to subtract this 10x because it's positive and bring it over here. When I rewrite this, I want it in standard form, so highest exponent to lowest exponent. 10 minus 10 is 0. Now that one side equals 0, I need to find my GCF. What is my greatest common factor here? 2. So let's factor out that GCF of 2. When I do that, I'll have 12x squared minus 5x minus 2 is equal 0. 2 is my first factor, so I'm going to go ahead and write that down. I now want to factor what's left inside parentheses. To do that, I'm going to use my area model. First term goes in the first box, 
last term goes in the last box. You always need to multiply your first number by your last number. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. So here I'm looking for factors of negative 24. That adds my middle number of negative 5. Those factors are going to be negative 8 and positive 3. Those are going to be the numbers that go in the empty spaces of my area model. Let me use pink so I can be consistent with my colors. Negative 8 and positive 3. The greatest common factor on my top row is 4x. The greatest common factor on my bottom row is 1. The greatest common factor of the left column is 3x. And the greatest common factor of the right column is negative 2. So this factored into 4x plus 1 times 3x minus 2. From here, I can use the principle of zero products to solve. I have this times this times this equals 0. So 2 times 4x plus 1 times 3x minus 2 equals 0. So I can use the principle of zero products to solve this. So I'm going to do this over here so I have more room. So I'm just going to set each one of these factors equal to 0. So either 2 equals 0, 4x plus 1 equals 0, or 3x minus 2 equals 0. For this first one, 2 equals 0. There's no variable to solve for here. So if there's no variable, we either have a true or a false statement. So let's think about this. Does 2 equal 0? No, this is a false statement, so it goes away. It's not something that we have to worry about. For 4x plus 1 equals 0, I can solve this by undoing addition by subtracting and getting 4x equals negative 1. And then to undo multiplication, I'll do division and get x equals negative 1 fourth. For 3x minus 2 equals 0, to undo subtraction, I'll do addition. Whoops. Scroll back down here. Whoops. <laughs> Plus 2. There we go. And I'll have 3x equals 2. To undo multiplication, I'll do division and get x equals positive 2 thirds. So here my two solutions are negative 1 fourth and positive 2 thirds.